vascular tone refers to the degree to which a blood vessel is constricted relative to its maximally dilated state. It is the main factor that determines the resistance to blood flow through the circulation and is dynamically regulated by a range of competing vasodilator and vasoconstrictor influences. In this video, I will outline the major neural and humoral pathways that regulate vascular tone. Local mechanisms are also very important and are addressed in a separate video. The central nervous system detects changes in the systemic circulation through neural signals relayed from receptors located in the walls of major arteries. A rise in blood pressure is detected by baroreceptors in the ascending aorta, aortic arch and carotid sinus. These are sensory nerve endings that respond to stretch in the vessel wall as blood pressure increases. Increased stretch increases the rate of action potential firing while reduced stretch decreases the firing rate. Chemoreceptors respond to changes in the chemical composition of arterial blood. They are small clusters or bodies of cells known as glomus cells. They are located around the aortic arch where they are called aortic bodies or near the bifurcation of the carotid artery where they are called the carotid body. The glomus cells depolarize in response to hypoxia, hypercapnia and acidosis. The depolarization evokes a rise in the cytoplasmic concentration of calcium ions, which releases neurotransmitters from the glomus cells onto the receptors of afferent nerve fibers. Signals from baroreceptors and chemoreceptors are relayed to the medulla oblongata in the brain, where they regulate the output of the autonomic nervous system. The baroreflex is a rapid but short term response to a change in blood pressure. Its most important role is in responding to a sudden fall in blood pressure. For example, when you stand up or if you lose a lot of blood. It does activate following a rise in blood pressure, but it loses effectiveness if hypertension is maintained. Most blood vessels are innervated by sympathetic nerve fibres, which when stimulated cause vasoconstriction, resulting in reduced blood flow and a rise in blood pressure. The effects are mediated by the neurotransmitter noradrenaline, which is released onto the smooth muscle cells where it acts on alpha-1 adrenergic receptors to evoke muscle contraction. This slide summarises the events that take place in the vascular smooth muscle cell when alpha-1 adrenoceptors are activated by norepinephrine, which is also known as noradrenaline. Alpha-1 receptors are G-protein coupled receptors that couple to the enzyme phospholipase C. When activated, phospholipase C cleaves phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate in the plasma membrane into IP3 and diacylglycerol. IP3 diffuses to the sarcoplasmic reticulum where it activates IP3 receptors to release calcium into the cytoplasm. The rise in the cytoplasmic calcium concentration leads to contraction. Calcium can also activate chloride channels resulting in the efflux of chloride ions and membrane depolarization. The depolarization in turn opens voltage-gated calcium channels to mediate calcium influx to further stimulate contraction. In parallel with the rise in cytoplasmic calcium concentration, the diacylglycerol generated by phospholipase C activates protein kinase C, which inhibits myosin phosphatase to promote contraction. The rise in calcium can also enhance the activity of calcium-activated potassium channels, which limits contraction. The overall level of tension generated by the smooth muscle 
depends on the free level of calcium ions in the cell. Blood vessels are also under the influence of hormones that circulate in the blood. The hormones listed here are the main ones involved in the regulation of vascular tone. Epinephrine, or adrenaline, released from the adrenal gland during sympathetic stimulation, can constrict or dilate blood vessels, depending on the receptors present. As just illustrated for norepinephrine, when alpha receptors are the predominant receptor, the vessels constrict. The alpha receptors are the, of the alpha-1 subtype. But if beta receptors predominate, adrenaline causes relaxation. The beta receptors are of the beta-2 subtype. Examples of arteries that express beta receptors and therefore dilate in response to adrenaline are the arteries in skeletal muscle. This means that blood flow to muscle is increased during times of enhanced sympathetic nervous activity. At the same time, blood flow to the splanchnic region decreases due to the activation of alpha receptors. Vasopressin, also called antidiuretic hormone, is a peptide hormone released into the circulation from the posterior pituitary gland in response to raised osmolarity of blood. It constricts blood vessels by binding to and activating AVP receptors, which are G-protein coupled receptors coupled to phospholipase C. The subtype of receptor mediating vasoconstriction is the AVP1A. Endothelin is a 21 amino acid peptide and the most potent vasoconstrictor known. It is synthesized mainly in the endothelium of blood vessels, but it circulates in blood and can be made by other cell types. Plasma levels of endothelin are raised in several cardiovascular disorders. Endothelin constricts arteries by activating ETA receptors on vascular smooth muscle. But there are endothelin receptors of the ETB subtype on the endothelium, which have the opposite effect. Atrial natriuretic peptide is synthesized and released from muscle cells in the atria of the heart in response to stretching of the atria. It acts on the ANP receptor called NPR1, which is a membrane-bound guanylate cyclase. Activation of the cyclase stimulates the production of cyclic GMP, a second messenger that promotes vasodilation. Angiotensin is produced as part of the renin-angiotensin pathway, which is explained in more detail on the next slide. The liver synthesizes the globular protein angiotensinogen and releases it into the circulation. Angiotensinogen is cleaved by the enzyme renin, which is secreted by juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney in response to any of three stimuli. These are a fall in pressure in the afferent renal arteries, stimulation of beta adrenoceptors by sympathetic nerve activity, and a fall in the salt composition of tubular fluid in the nephron. The product of angiotensinogen cleavage is the decapeptide angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is a weak vasoconstrictor, but two of its amino acids can be cleaved to form angiotensin 2, which is a very potent vasoconstrictor. The enzyme that stimulates this reaction is angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE. It is present in endothelial cells, but it's particularly well expressed in the lungs, so much of the conversion takes place as angiotensin 1 circulates through the lungs. Angiotensin 2 has several effects, mediated by the angiotensin AT1 receptor, 
which is a phospholipase C coupled G protein coupled receptor. It has two effects on blood vessels. Receptors on the smooth muscle cells cause vasoconstriction. Receptor activation can also lead to hyperplasia and hypertrophy in the artery wall, which can contribute to hypertension. Angiotensin II also acts on 81 receptors in the renal cortex to release aldosterone, which is a mineral corticoid hormone. Aldosterone stimulates the reabsorption of sodium in the nephron and therefore stimulates sodium retention. Drugs can interfere with this pathway in two places. ACE inhibitors block the enzyme activity of angiotensin converting enzyme, thereby inhibiting the production of angiotensin II and preventing all its downstream effects. One example of a drug with this action is Ramipro, but there are several drugs in this class. The effects of angiotensin II can also be prevented by 81 antagonists such as Lozartan. These drugs compete with angiotensin II for binding to the receptor. Both the ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II antagonists are first-line drugs in the treatment of hypertension and are widely used clinically.